Hi, Koma. I'm making this video for you and for anyone else who needs to hear this message. I made another video recently and I sent it to Papi and to my mother and Gabriel, but I didn't send it to you because it really wasn't meant for non Christians. It was meant for people who were already Christians, but you know, maybe had backslid a little bit. Um, I, I ended up talking a lot about repentance and um, about sin, things like that. But I think it would be a little confusing to watch that video first, if you were to watch that video first, without knowing what it means to be saved in the first place. Uh, I kind of talked about, well, how do you know if you're saved? But I never explained what it is to be saved. And I don't know if you've ever heard this before. It's kind of a shameful thing for me to, to know. Because I could have told you this. Uh, but it's all right. I'm going to tell you now. And it's a very, very important topic. It's actually the most important topic that there ever was. Uh, so let's just pray real quick so that we can make sure that we get God's help. Because I need God's help. This is, this is like take number 20-something. I have tried this so many times. I'm really trying to explain this in a way that's easy to understand, and I'm really hoping that this is the last time. So yeah, let's pray. Um, God, please help me to communicate this in a way that is glorifying to you, that glorifies you, and in a way other people can understand the truth of that. In Jesus' name we pray. So what does it mean to be saved? Let me just try to give you the basics. I'm just going to give you the basics. What you need to know. Alright, so what you need to know is that there is a God. And he's there whether you believe in him or not. We spend our time on this earth, but when we leave here, our soul, uh, our consciousness, you can say, it goes on forever. And it goes to one of two places. You can either go to heaven or go to hell. Heaven is synonymous with having everlasting life. You can say that. It's, uh, it's the same as being with God. On from here. Hell is the opposite. It just means to be separated from God. It means that you don't have life. Hell is an actual place too. It's, uh, it's a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, it says in the Bible. It's a place where you are tormented with no rest forever and ever. Um, there is no end to your suffering there. And since you are separated from God, you're separate. You're separated from love, hope, any good thing. You're separated from that forever. That's what hell is. And the bad news, and I think that it's important to know what the bad news is in order for you to have a full appreciation for what the good news or what the gospel is. The bad news is that we basically all deserve to go to hell because we are all sinners. And the Bible tells us, and I'll show you where later on, but the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. Um, meaning, the price that we deserve to pay for being sinners, which we all are, is to go to hell. Uh, so let's just start. Oh, before we get into that, before we get into I just want to make a quick correction from the last video that I made in case you actually get to watch it. Or for whoever that gets to watch this and the next in the last video. Um, I mentioned, I made a mistake. I misunderstood something that my father said. I said that I was concerned about his salvation because I thought he said that he thought that people that uh, practice other religions or that believe in other gods or other religions is what I thought he was saying, that they are saved as well, that they can be saved. Uh, but that's not what he was saying. He said that he thought different Christian denominations can be saved. People from that follow different denominations can be saved, and that's fine, as long as you have a good understanding of what the gospel is. And I'm going to try, 
very best to put this in a way that's easy to understand. And I don't want you to take my word for it. So we're going to use the word. We're going to use the word of God. And yes, this is the word of God. This is how we in this church age, in this age, um, this is our number one way of communicating with God. So, so we're going to use this. All right. So we'll start in Romans chapter three, verses 10 through 12. None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good. Not even one. So God's telling us right here that no one is even good. It's not even that no one is good enough. No one is even good because God's standards are so high like that. God is perfection, remember. Uh, God is holy. He is set apart. And we, according to what it says over here, have, we have no hope if, if we're going to rely on ourselves alone. Um, this is a good one. I got a kick out of this when I read this the first time. This is in Isaiah uh, chapter 66. And this is God himself speaking because in the beginning of the chapter it says, Thus says the Lord. Um, starting in verse 2, the second half of verse 2, it says, but this is the one to whom I will look. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. He really demands that. He really demands that we know who he is. He is not going to let us get away with not knowing who he is. Um, he makes a big deal about glorifying. Our whole purpose in life, first of all, is to glorify him. But he, throughout the Old Testament, throughout the Bible, uh, it, it says sometimes straight up that, well, I did this to glorify myself, basically. Um, so we really have to appreciate, or we, we have to, he, it's really important for us to know his majesty, who he is. He demands that of us. And then it goes on to say in verse 3, He who slaughters an ox is like one who kills a man. He who sacrifices a lamb like one who breaks a dog's neck. He who presents a grain offering like one who offers a, offers pig's blood. He who makes a memorial offering of frankincense like one who blesses an idol. Now this kind of sounds confusing. Um, what do you mean? He who does something good is like one who does something bad. Yeah, basically he's saying that uh, he who, um, just to make it, the first part, it was always a good thing. Like uh, he who slaughters an ox as a sacrifice to God is as one who kills a man. Like, he who gives me a present is like one who gives me a lump of coal. Unless you are coming to me humble and contrite in spirit. So not only are we not good enough, we're not even good, but even our actions, even the things that we do to him, unless we come to him in a certain way, they are as if, like, it would have been better if we didn't do anything at all. He who sacrifices a lamb, like one who breaks a dog's neck, it seems like it's, it's, I don't want to say like, he, like he's looking down on our worthless actions if we don't do it the right way, but it, that's what it seems like, right? That's bad news so far. Not only do we deserve to go to hell for being sinners, there is nothing that we can do to, to redeem ourselves. There is nothing that we can do to redeem ourselves. This is where the good news comes in. Hold on. Let me just get to the next verse before I start telling you what the good news is. The good news is that he didn't just leave us with any way out. There is a way out. Um, but since he is so perfect, there is only one worthy sacrifice that that could do it for us. And that was for him, him himself, God himself, to come down to live a life amongst us sinners, to degrade himself to live a perfect life and then to willfully give himself up as a sacrifice so that he can pay for our sins. The, the death that we deserve, and we deserve worse, to go to heaven. I'm sorry, to go to hell. What we deserved, he, he made a way so that we wouldn't have to have that end. And he came and he gave it himself. He gave his only son. God himself came down and suffered a horrific death. He was tortured. Um, he was hum humiliated. He was nailed on a cross. And basically he suffocated to death on that cross. 
he died in that way so that we can have a way to be with him. He loved us in that way that he gave us that free will. Um, let's read the next one here. So this is in Titus. Titus is a letter that was written by this guy named Paul to this other guy named Titus. Um, they basically go around and they're just spreading the good news. You know how I'm telling you the good news that, hey, you deserve to die, but there's a way out. Um, this is what they would do. Um, and uh, Paul is just reminding Titus that, hey, remember that we ourselves were once fools, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures. They just remind them that, I, remember that, you know, you used to be a sinner too. Well, I mean, I don't want to say used to be a sinner, but we used to be lost, I guess you could say, because we're still sinners. Um, we'll get more into that later, the sin thing. If you want to know more about the sin thing or what I think about sin, you, should, you can watch the, the first video. But even though... Um, just remember that because of this, when you go and approach somebody else, come in meekness and gentleness when you talk to them, because you used to be just like them. That's basically what's going on in this chapter. In, this is chapter three. In uh, verse four, verse four through seven, it says, but when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us right richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So get this, that we might become heirs, so that we might inherit something that we don't deserve at all. Um, let's say this, let, let's imagine it this way. Let's say you, you've passed away. And it's your judgment day now. You're facing God. You're a sinner. God is looking at you, and it's time to decide. It's time to judge you. Where are you going to go? Are you going to stay with me, the, the holy, perfect one? Or are you going to, because I can't have sin. God and sin, they don't mix. I can't have that around. So are, are you going to go to hell because of the sin that you've done? Or are, are you going to stay with me? And Jesus Christ is there saying, um, God the Father, uh, this guy is with me. I have paid for his sins. And not only that, we'll talk more, a little bit, let's talk about it now. Not only that, but I know him. We have a relationship together. We've been walking together. Because what happened after, what happened after the crucifixion, after Jesus was killed, was that three days later, he rose again. He resurrected. He was resurrected. It's kind of like, uh, it, it symbolizes... It paints the picture of what happens to us when we become saved. When we become saved, when we accept this, when we recognize, wow, this is God. Uh, I am nothing compared to him. I am a worthless sinner. Um, I can't even begin to do anything about making myself worthy of being in his presence. When you recognize that and you say, okay, I accept the free gift that you have given me, God. When that happens... Um, it's as if you have died to your old self, died to sin, like when God was, or Jesus was crucified, Jesus who was God, uh, was crucified on the cross. Um, and just like he, when he rose again, we can be assured that we will also be, I guess, resurrected or we can go and be with God as well. Um, that's what the good news is. That's basically it. But let's keep on, let's keep on exploring a little bit more. So I could get it in your head a little bit better. So I think the Bible can explain it better than me. I don't know how well I'm doing over here, but I hope that you understand what I'm saying. This is Romans chapter 6, verse 17. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I hope I, I kind of explained it well enough as to how that works. But that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. And then the last verse that I'm going to read to you here is in Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Um, this, is another, this is another big difference between other religions. Not another. This is kind of the same thing. But Jesus Christ is the only way that leads to salvation. The only way. And I hope that I explained why that works. It kind of works logically too, right? Um, how is it that we can expect to go to heaven? 
when we're such fallen people, such sinful people, people that aren't good enough, how is it that we deserve to go? Unless, unless someone basically pays our way, or unless we have a sacrifice that is worthy enough to pay for the sin that we've committed. And sin is very serious. Um, I didn't mention this before, I should have, but just to give you an idea of how we can never make it even if we try, and how strict God is, and the, the high standard that God has, um, if you were to even look at a woman with lust, that's as if you've already committed adultery in your heart. That's what Jesus says. If you look at somebody with hate or with malice, um, it's as if you murdered them in your heart. So you can't even, it's not even about your outward actions. It's even about your your thoughts. God even knows your thought life. If you even think the wrong way, which we, we can, I don't want, I mean, yeah, I don't think we can really help it all the time. We can, when once we recognize that we're having bad thoughts, yes, we can't control them and stop thinking those ways. But the initial bad thought, I don't know if we can always control that. It's like, as, as the, the fallen people that we are, it's just, it just comes with being human, I guess. Um, and coming, knowing our position compared to God, I mean, how could we ever expect that we could ever, you know, do enough acts or follow enough rules or have enough dietary restrictions or, or do whatever in order to get to the point where we deserve to be with God? I mean, it, it kind of just makes logical sense. Maybe it just makes logical sense to me because God has changed my heart. I don't know, but it just, the other religions, they're not the same. They're not the same because they don't offer salvation, and this is wrong. Because only Jesus saves. Only Jesus saves. So, I, just to make sure that I'm, I'm just going to say this over here. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Jesus Christ alone. If you want to know how to be saved, that's how you're saved. You recognize who God is. You recognize the fact that he is the judge, and he is a just God. He has said, hey, sinners, you don't belong with me. Or, sorry, let me, let me re rephrase that. Let me rephrase that because we're all sinners. Um, the wages of sin is death. What you deserve for sinning is death. But me, God, being a loving God, um, he has made a way out for us. He himself came down and died a terrible death. First he lived a perfect life and then he died a terrible death in order to be the only sufficient uh, sacrifice that there could be for our sin. Our sin is so great. Or our sin, sin is so serious that blood has to be shed. You remember in Isaiah where it was saying that, um, you know, you kill, you sacrifice an ox. That's what they had to do back then. They had to they had to kill animals in order to have their sins forgiven. Back in Mosaic Law, before Jesus came and, and became the, the final, he became the lamb. He became the, the the sacrificial lamb for us. That's what they used to do. They had to, they had to shed blood every time. Because that's how serious sin is. And we take it like nothing, but to God it isn't just nothing. Alright, now that's basically it. Um, one, the way that a lot of people phrase it when they say, oh, you know, this is how you become saved. You have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You'll hear that a lot. And yes, I agree with that. You do have to accept him as your Lord and Savior. But I just want to make sure that you fully understand what, what it means. Um... I think the, the Savior part can be easier easy to understand. I just explained it a lot. But the Lord part, what does it mean to have him be your Lord? Well, um, remember what I said that when you're saved, it's as if you die to your old self, your sinful self. You stop following um, the ways of the flesh. The flesh, it just wants to do carnal, bad things. Not just carnal and bad things, but it leads you to want to sin a lot. Because that's just what humans are. Um, if Jesus is your Lord, you're going to recognize that <laughs> that your truth, your truth, whatever that is, means nothing. If it is contradictory to the truth, to God's truth. That is the only truth that there really is. 
that's what that's that's a very important part of recognizing that Jesus or that God is your Lord. You have to know that what He said is right, no matter what you think about it. And actually, once you are saved, He will actually change your heart to actually love what He loves and hates what He hates. But um, the first video that I I made, um, it talked a lot about repentance because if you say that you have received this gift and as a result of receiving receiving this gift you you receive the holy spirit i didn't mention that but it's so hard to explain um after you're saved you receive the helper you receive the holy spirit another one of the three persons of god but still god he lives within you and he leads you throughout your life every single day you have to carry your cross like god carried or jesus carried his cross when he was going up to the hill where he was sacrificed where he was sacrificed? Yeah, you can say that. Where he was sacrificed. That's kind of what happened. Wow. Um, every day you have to pick up your cross and you have to follow him. Um, that is the repentance part or the following him or following all these rules. I guess you can think of it that way. Is not what saves you. But if you're not doing the repenting, if you're continuing to sin, it's a sign that maybe, maybe you haven't really been saved like you thought because... Um, it's something that happens together, you know. You have to accept that he is your Lord and your Savior. Not just your Savior that's going to save you, but you're not going to follow him as your Lord. You have to both repent and believe. But both of those things are important. But really, the, the one that you should just focus on is just the believing part. After you have the believing part down and you receive the Holy Spirit and you have that helper with you to guide you, it is just natural that you will repent. That just kind of, you don't have to really... I don't want to say you don't have to focus on it, but it's just something that happens naturally. Um, yeah, that's the good news. That when you face God on Judgment Day, as long as you have held this relationship with God or this relationship with Jesus, when you get up there and God looks at you and says, hey, as a sinner, you, you deserve hell. You deserve to be separated from me. If you... But Jesus, if you have accepted him, his sacrifice, the sacrifice that he's made for you, if you've walked with him, Jesus will, will, will look at you and say, hey, that person's with me. I know this person. We've been, we've been walking together. I've paid for their, their sin. I've paid the price for them. They don't have to suffer the consequences of their sin. Kind of. Not kind of. That's what happens. Um, but don't forget about the repentance part. That's pretty important. I don't want to under... I don't want to underplay how important that part is. If you want to know more about that, I made the other video, the very first one that's on this channel. Um, if you're not, if you want to look at it, you can. But um, that's that's the good news. <laughs> I hope that you understood it, and I hope that you understand how important it is. I mean, come on, it's about where you're going to spend the rest of eternity. Um, eternity is is a it's a time that goes on forever. If you really think about it. The limited time that you have here on earth compared to your entire existence is so insignificant even if you lived a hundred years who cares about a hundred years when you're talking about eternity and um, yeah I'm gonna send you a Bible from that but really you got to read your Bible too if you want to keep if he is your Lord if you're accepting him as your Lord and Savior don't you want to know what your Lord is telling you don't you want um, to know what his will is for your life, you'll know more about what his will is for your life when you read the Bible. And the Bible, it's the greatest story ever told. Even if even if you think you, you, you don't believe but you want to hear a good story, go ahead and read the Bible. Um, from the very beginning, God demonstrates. He gives us a little foreshadowing. The entire Old Testament is basically just a, a buildup. It's just explaining how... Jesus is going to come on the scene and how he's going to do this for us. God has had this plan from the very beginning. From the very beginning. Let me just say this real quick before we get off here. Because I thought this was really nice. Um, human beings, um, Adam and Eve, we didn't even make it more than one generation without sinning. Like it happened right away. Right away. Um, when Adam and Eve sinned, the, the first thing, one of the first things that they noticed, if not the first thing, was that they were naked. They were naked before, but they weren't ashamed of it up until they sinned. 
So they took some, I think, fig leaves, and they tried to cover themselves up, like they made holes for themselves. And then God came, and he asked them, you know, where are you? He asked them where they were, where Adam was, but um, he knew. He knew where they were. He was just trying to make, I think, I don't know, maybe he was trying to just shed light on how they were hiding from him. I'm not really sure. But when, when you're a Christian, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it for yourself. You're going to have firsthand uh, experience with this. That when you are sinning, if you go through a period in your life where you're backslidden, where you're not paying attention really to how God wants you to live, you try to live your life your own way, you basically just say, no, not your way, Lord. I want to do things my way. <laughs> the opposite of what you want me to do, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. When you're doing that, when you're continuously sinning, um, you do feel that separation from God. You don't even want to pray anymore. You feel shame. You make you hide yourself. You don't even pray as much anymore. Because what's the point? You're going to go and pray and say, God, I'm sorry for this, knowing that tomorrow you're going to do the same thing. It does separate you from God. You feel it yourself. Sin does separate you from God. Um, so yeah, anyways, Adam and Eve in the, in the garden, and they're ashamed because they're naked. They use leaves. And you know what God did? From the very first sin, blood had to be shed. He took some animal, I forget what animal it was, and he killed them and he used the skin from the animal to make them clothes. It's like, it's foreshadowing because the first thing that they did, even that wasn't good enough. They couldn't even do that themselves, just cover them, their, their naked bodies up. They couldn't do that themselves, well enough at least. God had to do that for them. And how did he do it? He had to shed blood. From the very beginning, this Bible over here is talking about what the good news is. Accept it. First of all, it's true. Um, it's not his will. It's not God's will that anyone should perish. But he's already said it. This is the way it is. If you want to be with me, then be with me. Then get to know me. Have a relationship with me. If you don't want to be with me, if you don't want to recognize who I am, then at the end, you're going to get exactly what you bargained for. What you get, You're going to get exactly what you asked for. You don't want to be with me here in this life? That's fine. You won't be with me in the next part of life. You're getting exactly what you asked for. Um, all right. I think that's it. I hope, I hope, Doma, that you understand what I was talking about. I hope I didn't leave anything out, anything that's really important. If you have any questions, you can call me. Everybody else, if you have any questions, um, you can leave a comment below. And I'll probably give you a link to, like, a sermon or something like that. Because I struggled so much just trying to get this message out. My goodness. It's been hours. <laughs> I have, I've recorded this, like, like 20, 30 times. And this is the last one. All right? I hope you got the message. God bless you.